Attack on Titan started off with a small group of people being referred to as what remained of humanity. The world beyond the walls was seemingly uninhabited, and it was overrun by insentient giants, or the Titans. With time, it was revealed that the people within the walls were a group of segregated people who were kept unaware of the truths about the outside world, while the very Titans they were threatened by were their own kind. As the secrets unfolded, we learned about terms such as Eldians and subjects of Ymir, Although the two terms do not cause much confusion among the characters within the story, their intricacies have puzzled many viewers. The people on the side we're supposed to root for are Eldians. Those we may want to root against are mostly Eldians as well. Most of them have a single ancestor known as Ymir, which makes them her subjects, as her powers can allow one to gain control over every subject of Ymir in more ways than one. In today's video, we seek to simplify this ordeal and create a clear correlation and distinction between Eldians and the subjects of Ymir, explaining how they can be one and the same while meaning two very different things. Who are the subjects of Ymir? Any Eldian who is not only a descendant of Ymir Fritz biologically, but also capable of turning into a Titan, provided they've been injected with or ingested Titan serum, is technically a subject of Ymir. Any Eldian who cannot anatomically transform into a Titan is not one of the Founder's subjects. So how did a particular group of humans end up as the subjects of one single person? Around 2,000 years prior to the beginning of Attack on Titan, Founder Ymir had gained the power of the Titans. 13 years later, she passed away as she intercepted a hit laid out by a rebel towards the tyrannical King Fritz, to whom Ymir was a concubine. Her situation was far from ideal, as she was in love with the very king who had enslaved her, almost killed her, and used her for her powers. She also had three children with the king, namely Maria, Rose, and Sheena. Because Ymir had always been a slave, she did not know of a life where she had freedom. Yet, deep in her heart, she desired. Her love for the king seemed to be born from something akin to Stockholm Syndrome. When Ymir intercepted the attack, she allowed herself to die. She could have easily regenerated, but she didn't have the will to continue living anymore due to her miserable life. Unfortunately, her worldly ties to the king prevented her from truly passing away following her death, and Ymir got trapped in a mysterious realm where time was significantly slower than reality. The fact that the source of all living matter was connected to Ymir's body aided in her entrapment as well. This realm, which is known as the Paths, is a land similar to a cold desert with a night sky. After Ymir was trapped there, a coordinate, or singular point, was formed in the sky. With that, she herself became the source of all living Titan matter. Back in the physical world, King Fritz was desperate not to let her Titan powers die out as he wished for Eldia to rule for eternity using the unrivaled power of the Titans. For this reason, he coerced their daughters, Maria, Rose, and Sheena, to consume the innards of their mother. The three of them did their father's bidding and were able to acquire the power of the Titans. The ritual became more or less permanent among the Eldian crown and eventually trickled down to the Eldian nobles. As more and more people inherited the power of the Titans, the coordinate branched out, with each branch signifying a human who possessed this very power and their path. The people who were part of the branches of the paths became Ymir's subjects. Among the royal family and the Eldian noble families, the Titan powers acquired were somewhat similar to that of Ymir's, as they could shift in and out of their Titan forms. Of course, because the members of the royal family were direct descendants of the Founder, they kept the Founding Titan, and had abilities to control the other Titans as they had access to Ymir's powers. Because Ymir was the coordinate, she had total control over her subjects via the paths, and she could alter their anatomies, abilities, and memories. However, since Ymir herself lacked free will, she never did anything of her own accord. Her powers were utilized when the wielder of the Founding Titan wished for it, or when any of the Titan shifters wished to shift into their Titan forms or regenerate. After the creation of the nine Titan Shifters, no new Shifter was born. Instead, the newer subjects of Ymir had the ability to turn into pure Titans if they somehow acquired the spinal fluid of a Fritz within their systems. As each of these Eldians gave rise to more and more generations, the newer Eldians began to be born with anatomies that allowed them to turn into Titans. Subjects of Ymir bred with others, causing a population rise among the subjects. Every such person became part of the paths that branched out from Ymir's coordinate in the Paths realm. By the time of the Great Titan War, the Eldians had become a race of humans who were born as the subjects of Ymir. How are the subjects of Ymir different from human beings? How has this led to world division? If a standard non-Eldian human being from Marley, or any other country outside Paradise Island, consumed the spinal fluid of a Titan shifter, they would not gain the powers of the shifter. 
If they got the spinal fluid of a Titan shifter from the royal family injected into their systems, they would still not turn into pure Titans. Meanwhile, in Attack on Titan, the Eldians who were made to accidentally consume Zeke's spinal fluid, which was mixed into the wine, turned into pure Titans with Zeke's scream. Such a thing would not happen with someone who is not a subject of Ymir. This anatomical difference created a genetic divide between the subjects of Ymir and the others. For the longest time, the Eldian Empire had used their Titan powers to rule over the world with an iron fist. In fact, they had terrorized the world, most specifically Marley, which led to growing feelings of fear, hatred, and resentment among the non-Eldian populace. Because the Eldians could essentially turn into demonic giants, the others began to perceive them as devils. Stories of Emir Fritz making a deal with the devil to gain such powers were born among the other nations. After Marley got its freedom, as Carl Fritz made the vow of peace and relocated most of his people to Paradise Island, the stories of Eldian devils began to spread among the people of the outside world. Some Eldians refused to move to Paradise and stayed back on the mainland, with Marley becoming home to a majority of the Eldian population outside the walls. The country also acquired seven out of the nine Titan Shifters and made the Eldians in Marley use them for Marley to expand its borders and become the next big superpower after Eldia. Naturally, the Eldians were heavily discriminated against worldwide for being able to turn into Titans and with their bloody history. They were then brainwashed to hate their own kind, forced to live within a comparatively less developed internment zone, and treated as third-class citizens. The Eldians in Paradise went on to be referred to as the Island Devils, who would eventually be exterminated by the outside world. Despite the great divide between the Eldians and the non-Eldians on the mainland, procreation between the two was not unheard of. However, they mostly happened when the Eldian partner hid their racial identity. The resulting offspring of the couple would also be born as a subject of Ymir. This was how the population of Ymir's subjects saw a great boom within the Eldian Empire itself, prior to their relocation to Paradise, as many non-subjects were forced into breeding with those who were Ymir's subjects. What is the difference between subjects of Ymir from Paradise Island and the rest of the world? Eldians both in and outside the walls live miserable lives, but ignorance is bliss, and up until the fall of Shiganshina, the residents of Paradise Island lived quiet, peaceful lives. Following their relocation, Carl Fritz took away their memories of the outside world, and they forgot about their lives after the creation of the walls. As a result, they did not know that they were confined within a small island and the pure titans roaming outside the walls were their own people, who were turned into mindless beasts by an enemy nation that wanted to eradicate them. Naturally, they were also unaware of how their current predicament came to be because of their very own king, who believed that Eldia had committed sins that could never be atoned for. Instead, he expected his people to accept death when the time came, as they deserved it for the crimes of their ancestors. Back in Marley and the other countries, however, the Eldians grew up with full knowledge of their history, although several things were distorted. They were told time and time again about the sins of their ancestors and the deal their Eldian founder had made with the devil. As a result, they themselves began to hate the island devils in paradise and were dedicated to doing Marley's bidding in taking them out. We witnessed the likes of Gabby, Reiner's family, and Aaron's grandparents staunchly believe in the anti-paradise propaganda. In fact, Gabby wanted to fight for Marley, not just to become an honorary Marleyan, but because she wanted the world to know that not all Eldians were bad. She had grown up in the Liberio internment zone with other Eldians, and due to her bonds and friendships, she wanted them to be liberated of discrimination. But she also believed that the Eldians in Paradise were evil to the core, and their sins were what led to her, her family, and her friends suffering so much on the mainland. This meant that the Eldians outside the walls knew that they were different in comparison to the other humans. Many may not know they were the subjects of Ymir per se, because the truth about the Founder's origins was not something that was common knowledge. On the other hand, the Eldians in Paradise did not even know that humanity existed beyond the walls. They believed that the pure titans roaming outside was a natural phenomenon that existed to neutralize the human population, and that the only surviving humans were those within the walls. This is why Levi was referred to as humanity's strongest, with humanity being the key word here. Was he the strongest living human worldwide? Probably yes, but he was considered to be humanity's strongest because he was the strongest within the walls, and for its residents, that was all that was left of humanity. Meanwhile, the Survey Corps always mentioned that they were fighting for the liberation of humanity and not a race or group of oppressed people. The Eldian populace in Marley was divided into two factions, 
the majority comprised of the apologists who believed in Marleyan propaganda and hated their ancestors and those in paradise. The minority comprised of the restorationists who believed that their founder was a benevolent goddess and Eldia was mighty but also a kind empire. They wanted to restore Eldia to its former glory and deeply resented Marley in the outside world. Their hatred was born as a result of the constant discrimination they were victims to, with the likes of Grisha Yeager losing her sister as she was fed alive to the dogs by the Marleyan military. As Marley was aware of the secret of the Titans, they also dabbled in Titan science. It's not like Eldia hadn't done the same before, as the Ackerman clan was literally the accidental result of Titan science experiments. However, the present-day Eldians in Paradise did not know any such secret, sans the royal family, and the first three seasons of Attack on Titan revolved around them unearthing those very secrets bit by bit. This was the reason behind Eren's Attack Titan not having selective hardening for the longest time, unlike Annie's female Titan, who had taken the Armor Serum. It wasn't until Eren injected the Armor Serum within himself that he began to be able to use selective hardening. Are all Eldians subjects of Ymir? Who are the exceptions? In the modern day, the term Eldian and subject of Ymir has been used synonymously by the world outside the walls. This is not too far off from the truth, as a whopping majority of present day Eldians are in fact subjects of Ymir. But Eldian is more of an ethnicity or a national identity, whereas subject of Ymir is a race. It's just that those who became Ymir's subjects belong to a particular ethnicity at one point, with the modern population mostly being her descendants. For example, Ymir herself has never been an Eldian. She became part of the Empire after her tribe was enslaved by the Eldian King. When her daughters became her subjects, the other Eldians in the tribe, and eventually the Empire, were not subjects of Ymir either. During the events of Attack on Titan, the nobles and the false King Fritz within the walls were considered to be Eldians by Reiner, Berthold, and Annie, but they clarified that they were not Ymir's subjects. At the same time, the association to protect the subject of Ymir beyond the walls argued that the subjects who belong to non-Eldian nations deserve to be protected as they were victims of Eldia's forced breeding policies and not the citizens of that country. At some point, Kenny's grandfather had theorized that the Ackermans were not subjects of Ymir as they were immune to the Founder's memory alteration and they could not turn into Titans. However, they were later shown to be subjects after Eren acquired the Founder's powers and was able to address Mikasa and Levi among the other subjects all at once. Beyond the walls, Marley was not the only country with an Eldian population. They just had the most concentrated and organized Eldian population. It is very much possible that many of the Eldians scattered across the other countries were not subjects of Ymir. There could also be those who were subjects but not Eldians. It's just that Marley used them as their war weapons as they utilized the power of the Titans to win wars and maintain their position as a world superpower, which is similar to what Eldia used to do as well. For this reason, it made sense for them to round up Eldians who were connected to the Founder, as they needed their Eldian population to be capable of acquiring the power of the Titans. Because Eldia was a nation, citizenship could probably be acquired. For example, the Asian clan from Hizuru was tight with the Fritz family, so much so that a small population of Asians existed even within the walls. This would mean that there were Asians who were born in Eldia, which made them Eldian not by ethnicity but by nationality, but they were not subjects of Ymir. However, a Marleyan might not have considered someone like Mikasa's mother to be an Eldian, as they often use the two terms interchangeably. Because Mrs. Ackerman was not a subject, she would not be referred to as an Eldian either. At the same time, an Eldian in Marley, despite being born in Marley, would be a subject of Ymir similar to an Eldian in Paradise. Someone like Mikasa, however, would be an Eldian and a subject of Ymir, but of mixed descent due to her mother being Asian. Are all subjects of Ymir linked to one? How does this end up causing the rumbling? Because Ymir is the coordinate, and the lives of her descendants branch out into paths from that very coordinate, all subjects of Ymir are linked to one another. However, this link cannot be exploited by anyone who does not have complete access to the Founder's powers. The Rees family in Paradise had partial access to the power, as Carl Fritz's vow chained them from using the true power of the Founder. The King had done this so as to make his future generations incapable of causing the rumbling and leveling the world. For this, the likes of Frida and Uri could alter memories and probably control Titans, but they could not unharden the walls full of colossal Titans, turn random Eldians into pure Titans irrespective of them having consumed spinal fluid, bring forth several past Titan shifters, alter the anatomies of Ymir's subjects, or take away their free will. 
After Eren managed to gain total access to Ymir's powers, he addressed every subject of Ymir at once, where everyone except Historia seemed to freeze, as she was royalty. He then undid all the hardening, such as the walls, Annie's crystallized shell, and Reiner's armor. With the walls getting unhardened and Eren having full control over the colossal titans, the rumbling began, went on until 80% of the world's population was wiped out. What happens to the subjects of Ymir at the end of Attack on Titan? Eren's goal was to lead the subjects of Ymir to their liberation. However, he knew that winning a small war, unearthing secrets, or trying to appease the outside world would not help, as the world was hellbent on destroying them. This was why he pointed towards the place beyond the sea and asked if they would be free if they killed all of their enemies. The world also had solid reason to fear the subjects of Ymir, especially due to Eren having the Attack Titan and the Founding Titan, and then launching an attack on Liberio. Things only got worse when people found out about his alliance with Zeke, which meant that the two could come together and gain access to the Founder's powers, which neither could do by themselves. Due to a combination of the Attack Titan's abilities to acquire future memories and the Founding Titan's ability to gain access to the visions of every possible reality accessible from the paths, Eren had realized that the only way his people and his friends would go on living was if the rumbling was initiated. The gruesome act would essentially destroy all of their enemies and lead the subjects of Ymir to their freedom, guaranteeing them a peaceful life. However, it was not like such an act would be supported by all subjects, since causing an omnicide is not as simple as killing the few people who tried to kill you. Most people who would die as a result of the rumbling would not be Twisted Marley soldiers, but innocent civilians. For Eren's friends to live the long lives he wanted for them, the curse of the titans that made a titan shifter pass away 13 years after acquiring their titan would have to end. They would also need to lose their ability to gain access to titan powers if they were to gain the trust of the outside world. As the biggest reason why people who did not even experience the horrors caused by the Eldian Empire and hated Eldians was due to their ability to turn into titans or access similar powers within human bodies the latter being the case with the Ackermans. Towards the end of the final battle, a predominantly Eldian alliance formed between the Eldian soldiers of Marley and the Survey Corps from Paradise. They fought to end the rumbling together and were able to separate Eren's founding titan from the source of all living matter. Following this, Mikasa successfully managed to kill Eren. With Eren being separated from the source, he also became vulnerable to being killed in a way that would release Ymir. Had Mikasa sliced his nape while he was still connected to the source, Ymir would have continued to remain in the Path's realm. In fact, Eren might have gotten stuck there as well. This source was the reason why the power of the Titans existed, and while it was not destroyed forever, its connection to a particular group of humans ceased to exist by the end of the battle. This resulted in the Eldians losing their connection to the power of the Titans, and Ymir getting liberated from the Paths, and from her position as the Coordinate. The Eldians, who had been turned into pure titans towards the end, such as Jean and Connie, went back to being humans. Armin, Reiner, and Annie continued to live beyond their 13-year mark as they lost their titan abilities as well. Mikasa and Levi most probably lost their superhuman abilities as their powers were also a result of the manifestation of titan powers. In the end, the Eldians ceased to remain as subjects of Ymir and became regular human beings instead. Marvelous Verdict! In conclusion, Eldian is a nationality and ethnicity because Eldia is a country. Being a subject of Ymir, however, as the future generations wound up with one common ancestor, made them a separate race of people. No Eldian in the modern day chose to become a subject of Ymir at some point in their lives. They were just born as one of the paths branching out of the coordinate, which signifies their lack of free will. While Eldians were discriminated against for being the subjects of Ymir, their ancestors had discriminated against others because they were not subjects of Ymir. This constant cycle created a loop born from fear and hatred, which the Eldians were liberated from as the story came to a close. And with that, today's video comes to an end. Did you like it? If so, then don't forget to like and comment down below. Until next time, thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.